Welcome back to Wristwatch Deep Dive. Today I'll be talking about my Favre Luba Raider Harpoon. I'm not a dealer or a flipper. I'm not selling the watches I cover, just highlighting watches I have in my collection. All right, so this is a Favre Luba Raider Harpoon. There are two versions of this watch. Um, one is 42 millimeters, and the other is 46 millimeters. Uh, this one is the 42 millimeter version. Definitely fits a lot easier on the wrist. And we'll talk about this box um, a little later. Um, so the 42 millimeter version is waterproof <clears throat> up to 300 meters, where the uh, 46 millimeter is waterproof up to 500 meters. But uh, other than that, they pretty much operate the same. So move some of this stuff out of the way. This is one of the cool features of the box. So as I push this button, up comes the watch. Very cool. Um, haven't actually had a watch box like that before, but very cool. All right, so here is the watch, 42 millimeter. Uh, stainless steel case. Reference number is 00-10131.08.52. Uh, the two different versions of this watch, besides the 42 and the 46 millimeter, they also, for both versions, they have two different color combinations, the blue and the orange. This one here is the blue, obviously. So it's 42 millimeter stainless steel case. This is called a cushion shape design. 50, meter, 50 millimeters lug to lug and 15 millimeters thick. So quite a thick watch. And there's a reason for that as we uh, start talking about the movements and what they had to do. So it's a unidirectional dive bezel, turning it now. And uh, it's easier to grip from the sides here I grip it here, the kind of the case gets in the way. But uh, as I grip it on the sides, it's definitely easier to grip. Black leather strap with blue stitching, 22 millimeters between lugs. Came with a tang clasp, and I have the uh, tang here in the box. But this is what the tang clasp look like. Of course, I hate the tangs because I feel like they put wear and tear on the uh, straps. So I replaced the tang with um, Amazon Special Deployant Clasp. It's pretty simple. So, yeah, that's, that's this here. It's only $9 on Amazon. It's real easy to install, and I feel like it preserves the strap. So... Um, I like this blue stitching along. It's really nice looking, nice detail. Um, instead of just having just, you know, your typical black plain strap. All right, so the movement is an automatic caliber FL301. Um, this movement is based on the workhorse Salita SW200, which is uh, the same as the ETA 2024, essentially. Uh, 38 hour power reserve, scratch resistant sapphire crystal, blue dial with a tiny second hand. And you can see that middle hand that looks very tiny. That is the second hand. Some people think that's the hour hand. That's not the hour hand. That's the second hand. <clears throat> so the large hand is the minute hand, this one here. And the hour hand is actually a... Uh, traveling disc hour hand so um it's, it's a pretty cool feature it's very unique i've not seen any other watch that uh tells time this way we'll go over that in a few minutes so the indexes minute hand and hour disc all have blue loom there's a manual helium release valve here or escape valve that's for uh for diving operations as the gases build up when you get to depth and you need to release the gases, that's how you do it. Screw down crown and uh, case back 
nothing special. It's uh, just just engraved with watch info. Um, again, not very artsy or nice to look at, but it's not totally plain either. So I acquired this watch online through an AD. And for those of you who don't know, AD stands for Authorized Dealer, kind of watch acronym for Authorized Dealer. So brand info. So the Fabre Luba claims to uh, be the second oldest name among all watchmakers, and I'm pretty sure that is probably true. Uh, founded by Abraham Fabre in 1737, the company is older than the United States. Pretty old. If you were wondering, um, Blancpain uh, has them beat by two years. They were founded in 1735. Um, so Fabre Lupra is uh, headquartered in Zug, Switzerland. In 1925, they produced a single button chronograph. They designed a number of their own movements in the 1950s. And the FL250 caliber was launched in 1962. It had an extra flat twin barrel with central second hand and 50 hour power reserve. That same year, they launched the Bivouac, which was the first mechanical watch with an altimeter and barometer. Uh, this caught the attention of prominent, prominent climbers and explorers. And uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. Fabre Lubra entered the dive watch arena in the 1960s with the deep blue in the Bathy, which was the first mechanical watch to indicate dive time, duration, and depth. So some pretty cool complications there. The family had to sell the company following the quartz crisis. The company has changed hands a bit. LVMH owned the company for a while before selling to Valentin in 2003. It's now owned by Titan, which is part of the Tata Group in India. Uh, new, new ownership though uh, has encouraged new innovation and in lines one included the Bivouac 9000, which was an award-winning watch that has a mechanical altimeter that can measure altitude up to 9,000 meters. In 2018, this watch was worn to the summit of Mount Everest and broke a new world record as the only wristwatch equipped with a barometer to work on Mount Everest. This uh, brand is still popular today, worn on the wrists of many people that climb the seven summits as well as Arctic and Antarctic explorers. So it's pretty cool. It's very popular among these like kind of extreme sport people, right? The company um, courted other extreme sport athletes as well on free no fin diving and free ride skiing. The Raider Harpoon, this model, was launched in 2016. <clears throat> so now you're asking, how do you read this watch? So let me uh, unscrew the screw down crown here. And there's no other complications except for time, right? So I don't have to... There's no quick set date or anything. So I'm in position one, I'm, I'm winding the watch. If I pull this out, so right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out. So let's say you wanna set the time to, let's say 9.30, right? So it, as I turn this dial, I'm basically turning, I'm continuing to turn this until the minute hand is past the nine. So I got a ways to go here. So right now it's three, four, five, Seven. All right, so now I'm approaching the nine. So as, as you can see, as I get to the nine exactly, the minute hand will be at the 12 o'clock portion. So right here, this is nine o'clock exactly. If I wanted to go to 930, which the minute hand would be at the six o'clock position, right? I'm gonna, and it's gonna presumably, and it should be, which it is, right in between the nine and the 10, so that is 9.30. Pretty simple, takes a little getting used to, but to be honest, it only took me a few seconds to kind of figure it out. And then I was like, oh, okay, simple. So then as I push it in, the second starts moving. So it does have uh, um, hacking seconds for precise time measurement. I just screwed it in, the seconds is moving, and it's set to 9.30. There's no AM or PM, it is what it is, it's 9.30. So, Pretty cool feature. I feel like, like I said, after you get used to reading it, which only took me a few seconds, um, I got it and it's pretty interesting. I like that uniqueness of it. Kind of gets into, uh, leads us into why I chose this watch. So the Fabre Louvre is a very old and reputable company, which I like. It's like one of kind of my um, sticking points to my collection is I like 
old, reputable, instead of like the trendy new companies, I, I tend to go towards the, the companies that have been around for a long, long time and have that history. Um, so I like the history and love the uniqueness of this model. I tend to gravitate towards sports watches, as you've seen so far in some of my videos. Um, I don't just collect one type of sports watch. Uh, I have dive watches, I have pilot watches, racing watches, dress watches, among other ones that don't, don't really fit any of those any of those molds. Um, I like the order or, or I like the color combination and uh, just the general unique look to it. And I get, like to get watches all, that look all different. You know, um, for example, I have a a Rolex Submariner, and there are a lot of dive watches that have that kind of typical Rolex Submariner look. So when I look for other dive watches, I like to get something completely different that not, that can't be really mistaken as an homage to uh, to one of the tried and true dive watches like the Rolex. So, uh, all right, we'll talk about the box for a second. So, as you've seen in my other videos, um, we uh, most of the boxes are pretty typical. This watch is not a extremely high dollar watch, but when I got this box, I was thoroughly impressed. I mean, how cool is that, that it has this hydraulic kind of lift system with a push button here, right? And you just push the button and it lifts up. I mean, that's, that's very cool. The card can go there as well instead of in here. And then uh, yeah, you just put the this here got this nice leather strap to kind of secure the case when I place this down. I mean, this is a serious box. Oh, I put it on the wrong way. The strap only goes one way. So very cool. I mean, typically I don't like to spend more than 30 seconds on a box, but uh, this is this was very interesting. I, I really like it. I think it was a cool detail that they didn't really have to do, but uh, but it was a, it was pretty cool. So, all right, next this is my next favorite part about this is the loom, because you have that that rotating disc hour hand. Um, you're gonna see the loom on this is very different. So let me get the lights. And already you can see it shining. Let me charge it up. And it's really easy to see. It's not as good as the uh, tritium tube ball, uh, tritium tubes on the ball watch. But I mean, how, how cool is that? And you can easily see that it's, you know, 930 or nine, just after 930. So nine, approaching 935. So very cool. Uh, the only thing is, as you can, you probably already know the loom doesn't last, you know, more than 20, 30 minutes in my experience. Uh, I don't really keep my watches in the sun that much. So if I charge them for a long time, maybe it would last longer, but, but it is very cool, very different and very bright, like easily recognizable. All right, get the lights back and uh, we'll do the wrist shot. Just kind of finish up the video. And there it is. So I, again, I have a, between a six, it's like a six and a three quarter inch wrist. And though this is a big watch, it doesn't really overhang my wrist. It comes close. Um, this is 42 millimeters and it wears big for a 42 millimeter and it's very thick as you can see. But, uh, but overall, you know, I, again, I don't really care at the end of the day so long as I like it and I do like it. I'm glad it's not the 46 because the 46 would be, I think, just just ridiculous. So I'm glad they released this 42 millimeter model. And uh, all right, let me know what you think in comments. Shoot me an email with any questions you might have. And uh, my email is wristwatchdeepdive at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. See you next watch.